Welcome to Kampala Bible Revelation Church, located at Makere 1, Okubida Zone. Pastor Hani Mutokiriza and other servants of God welcome you to a ministry based on the Word of God. We have a covenant with God for placement and multiplication according to Ezekiel 37 verse 26 to 28. Welcome to our Sunday services which impact believers with transformational revelations from the Word of God. Our Thursday midweek service is a series of teachings equipping believers with practical skills from the Word of God. Testimonies of God's goodness abound. You can also join our Doers of the Word Bible Institute where God's children have been ground into God's Word and empowered with a practical approach to transformation both spiritually and physically, totally free of charge. We are located at Makerere 1, Mukubida Zone near Makerere Business Institute along Sapaloka Guaro. You are welcome. The Ark of God at Jericho by faith. Hebrews 11.30, you, you have that scripture right there on your handouts. By what? The walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. So it was not the compassing that brought down the walls. It was not the shout that they shouted. Those walls came down by faith. Oh, bless your name. In other words, they would have compassed it seven days and they would have shouted and nothing would have happened. Why? Because they had no faith. If they had no faith, however much they would have compassed the city, however much they would have shouted, nothing would have happened. All that happened, happened because it was by faith. In Luke chapter 18, and verse 8 shows us that faith is the most rare commodity. Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. Look at that. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. So the avenging is no problem. Everything is settled. God is almighty. He has all power. He's not a magician. He's a miracle worker. Bless his holy name. I said bless his holy name. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find prayer on the earth? Shall he find fasting on the earth? When the Son of Man comes with all his power and might to effect the word of God into your life, Will he ever find faith? That shows you that faith is the most rare commodity on this planet. Faith is the what? The most rare commodity. Oh, people can see, people can praise the Lord, amen. People can pray, people can go into fasting, people can declare and make declarations. But until there is faith, nothing will ever happen. So God can come by his might and his power and do something on his own. God is almighty. He can do all things, but he cannot come into your life with his power and might to do anything without your faith. In other words, your faith is a gateway into your life. Faith is a gateway into your life for God to do amazing things in your life. Oh, bless his holy name. I said, bless his holy name. Amen. What is God looking for every time he comes around me? He is looking for faith. He doesn't come to check out whether I prayed or not. He does, by the way, you can't have faith and don't pray. Amen. <laughs> amen. Can I hear your good amen again? <laughs> every time God is coming around me, because when the Son of Man comes, and you know that he, every time he comes, something good is about to happen. But the question he asks is, Will I find faith? Will I find faith? So this puts faith in a special place. This puts faith in a special place. Actually, this makes faith a rare commodity. God is looking for <laughs> among us. God is looking for faith among us. God is looking for faith among us. God is not looking for those who have been in church for a very long time. Thank you for coming to church and being in church for a very long time. The question is, do you have faith? 
So God may begin to work. Pastor, I've been praying, but nothing has been. Oh, thank you for your prayers. Do you have faith? With regard to your prayers, bless his holy name. <laughs> I said, bless his holy name. What, what is it about faith? Amen? Is it? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Whoever you are, pastor, even when I come with a hundred million shillings as an offering, without faith, it is impossible to please him. It, he didn't say it's very hard. He said, it's absolutely impossible. He didn't say, if you try again and again and again, he said it is impossible to please him. Bless the name of Jesus. So in this month, God wants you to cultivate your faith. God wants you to focus on your faith because the walls of Jericho are coming down by faith. The walls of Jericho are coming down by faith. The ark of God is at Jericho so your faith may begin to work. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I said, bless the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8 and verse 46, you all know the story of the lady who had been bleeding for 12 years, pushed herself through the crowd, came and touched Jesus. Just touched Jesus. Verse 46, and Jesus said, somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. <laughs> I perceive that what? Power has left my body. Someone touched me. Bless his own name. In verse 48, he said, he said unto her when she came forward, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. What is it that this woman had as she touched Jesus? She had faith. So faith is a power conductor. Faith conducts the power of God. Bless your name. I said bless your name. You can say faith is a power connector. So only those with faith shall see God's power. Only those with faith shall see those walls coming down. Only those with faith shall see God's power pull down the walls of Jericho. And you're one of them in Jesus' name. And I said you are one of them in Jesus' name. But now you begin to see the importance of faith. Bless his whole name. You know, many times we talk about faith. Everyone's talking about faith. You need to have faith. <laughs> Bless his whole name. Nothing is about faith. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is about faith. No matter how much you shout. It's not about shouting. It's about believing. Bless his whole name. I said bless his holy name. In Joshua chapter 2, Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1. Very important. Joshua chapter 2. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly. You see how faith works? You see how faith works? Say, go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into Anhalot's house, named Rahab, and lodged there. Faith is no respect of passions. Bless his holy name. By faith, they went to spy out secretly the city of Jericho. What does it show you? Bless his holy name. What does this mean? That faith defines the weakness of your enemy. I'll go to verse 9. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. Ah, who is this one talking? <laughs> is this what I'm talking? And that your terror, your what? Your terror is fallen upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. It's like we're reading the New Testament. Praise the Holy Name. It's like someone is speaking that to me right now. Because actually, that's what is happening right now around you. That amen is weak. Yes. Can I hear the loudest believing amen? Yes. Verse 10, he said, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And remember, they were not up, up to date. And what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. 
Did she say anything about Jordan? So they hadn't yet got the news of Jordan. And as soon as we had heard these things, you know, your enemy is hearing everything about you. Can I hear a good amen again? <laughs> Telling you the secrets of faith. These are the secrets of faith. When you walk by faith, the news about you go ahead of you. When you walk by faith, news about you go ahead of you. Can I hear your good amen again? And as soon as we had these things, our hearts did melt. Our hearts melted. Can you imagine a heart melting? If it's made of, of plastic, then it will never, ever come back to its form again. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. <laughs> How did this woman know this? Bless his holy name. <laughs> because of who? Because of you. Someone is taking this word this morning seriously. Not literally. Because of, he said, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven. So it's not by their might, it's not by their power. It's not what they were hearing. They were hearing that their God was working on their behalf. They were hearing that their God was working on their behalf. It's not their might, it's not their power. These people were hearing. They were hearing how their God was fighting for them and helping them. It's what they had. And they said, when we had that, we had no more heart in us, no more hearts in us. No man had any more courage, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and earth beneath. Bless your name. Amen. Let me tell you the other aspect of faith. That faith defines the weakness of your enemy. When you see your enemy by faith, you will see his weakness. When you see your enemy by faith, a giant will turn into a grasshopper. That amen is weak. Amen. When you see your enemy by faith, you'll see how dead, how long dead he has been. He died a long time ago, and you've been struggling, trying to think how, trying to think how, what am I going to do? When you see by faith, the story is different. Bless his holy name. I said, bless his own name. I said, bless his own name. I said, bless his own name. When you see your enemy by faith, a giant becomes a grasshopper. I want to show you someone else. A man called Gideon in the book of Judges. God reduces his army from how many thousands? Tens of thousands? From tens of thousands to hundreds. And <laughs> Gideon is wondering, how am I going to fight? This army eats the whole earth. It fills the whole earth. It's a multitude. And Gideon was wondering. Then God tells him, hey, Gideon, if you're afraid, go down secretly to the camp of the enemy. That's the other side of faith. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. You need to scout out your enemy. Begin to scout out that poverty. Who said that poverty and your family are synonymous? Have, 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 have I said judges? Go with me to judges, chapter 7. Chapter 7 and verse 11. Oh, praise the Lord. Something good is happening this morning. Amen. From verse 10, God said to Gideon, But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Pura, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say. And afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. <laughs> you see that? Then went he down with Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number, as the sun by the seaside for multitude. This was huge. And how big was Gideon's army? <laughs> A mere 300. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. You, you see? You know, dreams. Amen. And lo, a cake, a mere cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian. A mere bread. Think about it again. Bread. 
He said, in the house of Mary, and came unto the tent and smote it, <laughs> that it fell. Bread killing. And overturned it. Eh, bread overturning. And the, the, the tent lay alone. And this fellow answered and said, this is nothing else save the sword, <laughs> save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. That's not just bread. That's a sword. <laughs> into, into, for into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the hosts. And for so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and that interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned to the host of Israel. I never said a good amen. amen. And said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered your hand, the host of Midian. Where is Gideon getting all this strength? He went and spied secretly his hosts, his enemy. And that's the other side of faith. Bless his holy name. Stop talking about those problems. Go and find out. Can I hear your good amen? amen. So about crying about everything. Be, st- begin to spy. Become an FBI. Bless your name. A spirit, a spirit filled FBI. And go out and check out. According to the scriptures. Where is this demon operating from? Bless the name of Jesus. Why does my boss always shout at, out at me? Where is the problem? Go and spy out secretly in his word. In God's word. Instead of trying to resign from that place of work. Do not resign. Spy secretly. That's our other side of faith. Faith always defines the weakness of the enemy. There is no enemy without weakness. As long as you're looking at that enemy by faith, you will define his weakness. And before you know it, you'll be dominating. Why do you define it? So you may dominate it. Now, look at David. When David came to the camp of Israel, there was a great man there, a giant speaking. He had been speaking for 40 days, taunting the arm of Israel. Just send me one man. If he ever kills me, then all this horse will be yours. For 40 days. And every time he came out, the army of Israel looked for toilets and latrines. Because the man was tall and huge and everyone was saying, who can dare attack him? Then David came. Don't forget that David was just a small boy. And his brother said, now, why have you come here in the, in the first place? Why have you left the sheep in the field to come here? They said, no, it's my father who sent me to bring you something. To I, why have you come here? You are too small for this. And as they were talking, that guy showed up. Give me a man! And David said, look at what David said. Go with me to First Samuel. You need to grow your faith, amen? I'm saying you need to grow your faith. Your faith must come to this level. Your faith must come to this level. First Samuel chapter 17 and verse 26. First Samuel 17, 26. Something good is happening here this morning. Can I hear your good amen? First Samuel 17, 26. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine? And takes away the reproach from Israel. He said, for who? Look at that. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is he? Everyone said, don't you see he's a giant? And then you ask, who is he? He's a giant, that is it. (laughs) And who was talking? The talk was a a mere small boy. There would be boys with giant killing faith that are arising in this place this morning. There are young men and women and small men and small women in this place writhing with giant killing faith. If you are the world, can I hear your good amen? amen? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that, should, that he should defy the armies of the living God? David asked no, I was looking at, who is this boy talking? Who is it? And when he went to King Saul, he said, hey, boy, 
He's been a fighter from childhood. And you, you are, you, you, you are just a, you know, a shepherd, a, a small boy. Forget all this. Bless his whole name. David had to stand his ground to convince the king to go to kill the giant. Can you imagine that? Every time you're walking by faith, every giant shall appear as a grasshopper. Every time you walk by faith, every giant shall turn into uncircumcised. Amen. Philistine. Can I hear you loud and say amen? amen? And I see your victory coming this morning. Just name. Amen. I'm saying I see your victory coming this morning. Amen. I see your victory coming this morning. Amen. That means there is no giant anywhere on this planet as long as you are looking at him by faith. I didn't hear a loud amen. There is no single giant on this planet as long as you are looking at him by the eyes of faith. Can I hear your good amen? amen? Maybe to be a millionaire is a giant to you. To be a millionaire, maybe, is a giant to you. I have good news for you this morning. You are a millionaire. Amen. By faith. In Jesus' name. Shout it and say, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> Shout it, it doesn't sound spiritual, but shout it for me. I'm a, I'm a millionaire. When it's by faith, every giant will turn into a grasshopper. You begin to ask, who is it? To see, I see he's a giant. He has all those weapons. But who is he? Who is he? Who is that boss? Who is he? Who is she? Bless his own name. Oh, pastor, she's been doing like that for all these years and everyone who comes down. No, not this time around. A David has come into that office. Amen. That amen is, does not answer. Amen. A David has come to that office and something is about to happen. Amen. Things are about to shift. There's something happening that you can't see. Amen. I wish I had a better amen. amen. Faith will always look at your enemy with disdain. Faith despises all your enemies. I wish I had a better amen. amen. Faith is despising that cancer. Amen. Faith is despising that tuberculosis. Amen. Faith is despising that poverty. Amen. Faith is despising that problem. Amen. And you're seeing it for the last time. Amen. Because now you are beginning to see it by faith. Amen. I wish I had a better amen. amen. A louder amen. amen. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. <laughs> Are you aware that whatsoever is born of God must overcome the world? And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That's First John chapter 5 and verse 4. What does it suggest to you? That every believer... Everyone born again has already, is not going to, has already overcome every wall of Jericho anywhere. Then he says, but this victory is our faith. This, so I'm not going for victory, I'm going, I'm going for faith. I'm not rushing to get victory, I'm rushing to get faith. I'm not trying to build my victory, I'm building my faith. Because if I have my faith, I already have my victory. You can as well say that faith is a career of all God's victories into my life. Faith is a what? A career of all God's victories into my life. Faith is a career of all God's victories into my life. Faith is a career of all God's victories. So I sh what should you go for? Should you go for victory or faith? You should go for faith. You should go for Faith. You should go for faith. Even if you go to a place where they say miracles are happening without faith, you'll come out empty-handed. You will always come out empty-handed. As long as you have faith, you don't, go, you don't need to go to any congregation to get a miracle. As long as you have faith, miracles will happen in your home. At your place of work, when no one is seeing you, <laughs> miracles will happen. Bless your name. That devil is a liar. He, he has deceived you. You need some special kind of prayer by some special kind of 
man or woman of God. <laughs> Bless you. No, without faith, it is impossible to please him. I don't care who is praying. As long as you have no faith, it is impossible. I always tell the story of uh, Lazarus. The very story that Jesus gave. Lazarus and the rich man. That Lazarus was very poor. And his companions were dogs. And he always desired to eat the crumbs from the rich man's table. And time came, he had to die. <laughs> you can't live such a life and don't die. <laughs> you can't have dogs for companion. Bless his own name. And desire crumbs from a rich man's table and live. Crumbs don't satisfy. So you have to die. So, so he dies anyway. And guess what? Then he sees angels. Where have you been all along? We've been around. Are you sure? Yes. Where are you taking me? We're taking you to heaven. Oh, okay, we go. And then he goes there. Whom does he find first? Abraham. Do rich people. He almost had a heart attack. <laughs> Do rich people also make you to heaven? Because that's what he knew. Where was his faith? He had no faith at all. What would transform Lazarus' poverty into wealth would be faith. And then nothing else. Bless his holy name. Every child of God in this place, you can tell, you know, by, and the, you can't have faith without works, amen? So, don't misunderstand me. Faith knows something that hides somewhere. Faith is defined by works. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said praise the Lord. Amen. Everyone that's born again has a measure of faith. That's Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Verse 3, sorry. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. So faith thinks soberly. According as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Does this show you that therefore every brother, every sister has the measure of faith? So there's no one without it. Bless his holy name. But I'll tell you honestly, there are people with, Jesus used to say, how come you have no faith? How come? Oh, ye of little faith. That means that even the measure that God gave them is, is reduced. That God gave them a measure, but in the process, that measure even reduced, it has come to little faith. Actually, to some of them, says, How come you have no faith? Where is the measure that I gave you? Oh, Lord, I lost it. Huh? You lost it? <laughs> Are there people in this church who have lost their faith? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Today is your day. <laughs> Today is your day. Bless the Lord. So everyone has a measure of faith for any miracle that you want. Bless the Lord. I said bless the Lord. Everyone in this place. But now the secret is do you want to see great miracles? Do you want to see big things happen in your life? What are you going to do? You need to grow your faith. Because faith grows. From the measure that he gave you, it's now up to you to grow it and multiply it. You are given five talents and you are expected to receive more five talents. So is faith. Faith grows and multiplies. Bless his holy name. The measure of faith that he gave you, while you are still a child, he expects you to multiply it as you grow. Until you are no more a child. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 13, he says, Till we all come in the unity of the what? Of the faith. What does this mean? That you're growing. God expects you to grow. God expects you to grow your faith. 
God expects you to grow your faith. And this is so personal. Bless his holy name. I said bless his holy name. Amen. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a what? A perfect man. What does that show you? That you have to grow your faith. And to the measure, have you seen that? So there is a measure of faith that you got, and there is the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So from the measure he gave you, he expects you to grow it to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Why? Look at verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Is God against children? No. He's against adults who behave like children. Can you imagine an adult having a diaper? Oh, God have mercy. Oh, bless his holy name. That's what God is at. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Someone asked me, Pastor, what is the difference between the Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost? <laughs> you are a child. Pastor, isn't it true that at 3 a.m. when we are in overnight, then the heavens are open? You are a child. <laughs> Pastor, how about this, this beast, the triple six, so that no one can sell or buy. You are a child tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the slate and the lies of men. Bless his holy name. I say, so, someone tells you, I'm going to pray for you a special prayer. What makes it special? What makes it special? I'm going to pray for you a special prayer and God is going to answer right now. Why not always? <laughs> Bless his holy name. The example I always use are these bodybuilders. Everyone here knows a bodybuilder? What is unique about a bodybuilder? Huh? What is unique? Muscles. They walk like this. <laughs> and when he does this, you want to hide. <laughs> Because things just pop out. And then he does this, and then something pops out. <laughs> Those guys, uh, be careful with them, amen. If he, ever gets, if he ever gets your hand like this, you're finished. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They even get medals. They, 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 there's the world bodybuilder champion. You know, bless his own name. They even get medals, gold medals, silver, and all that, and money behind it. Praise the Lord. Now the question is, how many more muscles do those guys have than you? Huh? You have every muscle that they have. Now, what, what is the problem? The problem is you have not grown your own. You even pay to enter to see someone who has second time to grow his muscles. <laughs> Why don't you grow your own so that instead of going to watch, you, you, you just, and you, you know? <laughs> Praise the day. What have those guys done? They have grown their muscles. That's how faith grows. You have to put it to practice. Amen? Stretch yourself. Give an offering you've never given. Go and do something you've never done. Amen? For the Lord. Praise the Lord. Begin to stand on promises which appear impossible to you. Can I hear you loudest? Amen? That way you are flexing your muscle, you are growing your faith. Don't look at the results. By the way, I, I, I read this on Facebook so many times. Some, somebody said, you can't be doing the same thing and expect the different results. Why not? In music, we do the same vocal exercises, but our voices are changing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's shallow philosophy. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord again. No, we're doing the same thing. Standing on the same promises. I don't look at the results. I will not look at it. I know something is growing. I will stand on the same promises. I will stand on the same promises. I will stand on the same promises. When I hear a testimony, I will go also and stand on the same promises. What, what, what am I doing? I'm growing my muscles. 
my faith muscles. And that day will come when I'll say, devil, come here. There are you. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I wish I had a better amen here. Welcome to Kampala Bible Revelation Church, located at Makiriri 1, Okubida Zone. Pastor Hani Mutokiriza and other servants of God welcome you to a ministry based on the Word of God. We have a covenant with God for placement and multiplication according to Ezekiel 37 verse 26 to 28. Welcome to our Sunday services which impact believers with transformational revelations from the Word of God. Our Thursday midweek service is a series of teachings equipping believers with practical skills from the Word of God. Testimonies of God's goodness abound. You can also join our Doers of the Word Bible Institute where God's children have been ground into God's Word and empowered with a practical approach to transformation both spiritually and physically, totally free of charge. We are located at Makerere 1, Mukubida Zone near Makerere Business Institute along Sapaloka Gua Road. You are welcome.